practice number seven done. So we're close to halfway and uh, excited about uh, the competitive toughness uh, that I've seen from this team. Really, really excited about that. A lot of um, experience, obviously, coming back on, on defense. But man, we've had great competition uh, from the from all the way back to Matt Drills. It's, whether it's the new guys or the returning players, uh, new players within our program that have new opportunity uh, to go win jobs. And, and, and so guys are showing up with purpose and with passion, with the intensity that you want uh, to see, with the physical toughness uh, that the game demands. And so really uh, thrilled with those things. If I was having to uh, get guys to do those things in a, in a better way or uh, if we were not meeting those standards, it wouldn't be a lot of fun. So uh, saw uh, a lot from the veterans that I really like. And, uh, and again, a lot of uh, first year players that you know uh, really love too. So got great competition in particular in the you know at linebacker and at, at safety at corner and our back seven. Um, pretty good competition at that defensive end. And I really like our group of inside players, uh, D tackle and then uh, offensive line uh, wise. Um, we uh, got some bad news with uh, Troy Everett. He's going to have a, a surgery, but we'll, we'll hope to see him back. Uh, by the end of, of fall camp or so. And uh, if anybody can do it, he will. And in any position that you can do it, uh, he will. And uh, we got great doctors and a great plan for him. He's going to have his surgery tomorrow. Uh, but uh, and then, uh, but I, I really like, again, um, again, uh, where we're at, all things considered, watching these guys get better. And again, uh, Josh Bates will slide in there and play some center. Uh, along with Josh and Sosa, and then Garen Hatchett can always play center, uh, play guard, can really play all five positions. Uh, but, you know, Jake Taylor and Jacob Sexton have, have done, you know, really, really well. Logan Howland, along with Spencer uh, Brown and Michael Tarquin, you know, those guys have all done a really, really nice job uh, trying to, you know, gel together and learn, you know, uh, you know some of the new guys learn what we need him to do. Again, young guy Isaiah Autry has been doing uh, some really good things. And then, uh, again, inside, uh, like where we're at. Uh, again, feel good about the guys that we have inside. And some of them have experience, and some of them uh, don't have as much experience, but like what we have and, and what's coming, uh, both. And uh, really going to be some, we've got some great young players that have a chance to be really, really special. And hopefully we can get them uh, to that point to, you know, a winning level, you know, sooner rather than later. Uh, our tight end group, you know, when, when they're healthy, it's going to be a heck of a group. Even when we're uh, semi-healthy there, that's uh, we're in a little better position with more guys capable of playing. Uh, so, again, um, Bauer Sharp has been uh, really good uh, prior to uh, pulling his, uh, just got a slight hamstring. Uh, Helms looked really, really good. And then um, Josh uh, and uh, Cade both have, done, have really flashed, done some really good things. And then uh, Jake, we'll get Jake at some point in time here. I mean, he's a very experienced guy, and we know exactly what he's going to bring to the table. Uh, he's going to bring the physical toughness uh, as well as a, a really uh, capable route runner and uh, catches the ball really, really well. And then uh, receiver, you got great competitive depth there. Uh, love where we're at at that position, both inside and outside. And uh, got a good group of running backs uh, with, again, experience. And uh, saw Chuck and Barnes and and uh, Hicks, and along with uh, Sammy. He's done done some really, really good things. Uh, had a, several explosive plays. And, uh, and again, overall, we've had a lot of explosive plays through the first seven practices. It's something that showed up every single day. We've got good quarterbacks that can, uh, you know, have great vision, great instincts, good decision making. Uh, Starting with Jackson and, and throw with accuracy, and um, do a good shot, job from a leadership standpoint, and, uh, taking command of things. And then, uh, you know, General's done some really good things. All the young quarterbacks uh, have. Um, uh, Mike Hawkins has done some really good things. Uh, as well, and uh, uh, 
and then um, trying to think, uh, and then our kickers. Uh, our kickers have been really pleased with what we've seen from our kicker kickers. Uh, Zach's been uh, good. Keltner has been uh, uh, really good as well. Super consistent. And, uh, and then Liam Evans has really uh, shown some great things too. And uh, uh, haven't gotten the live kicking uh, when it comes to uh, the punting and the kickoffs and all that. That'll be things that we do here on Thursday. We'll have a full scrimmage. So we've had a couple of days. We've had part of the practice of scrimmage and uh, working on a lot of situational stuff right now. I'm trying to take them to some dark places. That's what you got to do. And this is that time of the year. They got to take themselves and we got to take them too. As coaches, as we develop our team, our toughness, our mindset, our attitude, uh, you know, nurture how we do what we do. You know, walk through that door, what that means, putting on the jersey, putting the pads on, coming to work. Uh, you know, practice number seven's over. You can't go back and do it again. So not wasting opportunities. Show up here again with with purpose and with passion and the toughness this, this game requires. And our guys learning that you, you can't pay, you know, less than what it takes. And, and so I, I like, I'm not surprising anybody uh, when I tell them that. And so we've, we've got the right guys in the locker room nurturing, you know, those things too, from a, a leadership standpoint. Okay, good you, thing. You've talked a lot about uh, the defense and the experience returning. Going into your third year here, third spring, do you feel like it's starting to get to where I know it's never perfect for you, but yeah, as spots it is, as spots it is, and yeah. you know, overall we do have a, you know, another a year in the system, and I just look at all the systems. I think it's important, and um, starting with just again the excitement that you need to have, the passion that you need to have, the the focused intensity that you need to have, whether you're in segment meetings, team meeting, or you come to this practice field, if it's a walkthrough or if it's a two-minute drill to win the game. All of it should require the same level of passion and intensity and the focus. And just, again, have a, having a group of guys that are obsessed with um, the physical toughness, obsessed with uh, developing you know, our team, obsessed with the details, uh, obsessed with uh, you know, the, um, you know, having the right mindset every single day. And uh, competing and winning. You know, I want our guys to try to create as much competition as we can, and I want our guys to understand the value of winning and losing. And uh, it should matter. Everything should matter. And we're going to grade every uh, play from practice. And you should, again, should be incredible, incredibly disappointing if you don't get a winning grade at practice every single day. And you want to be somebody that develops trust during this time of the year. You want to be somebody that uh, develops your own uh, toughness mentally and physically during this time of the year. And then you develop great habits, you know, goals and things like that are, are great for setting direction. But, you know, your habits and your guts, you know, your will being stronger than your skill, your will and your habits are what's going to determine, you know, whether or not you're successful. And I want our guys to really buy into that. And... Uh, so you're either breaking, you know, bad habits or old habits or creating new habits. And today's in the books. It's, it's a wrap. There ain't nothing these guys can do about it, good or bad, you know. And so, but on Thursday, they get to start over. And it's a new beginning, and, and it's a day and a season and a moment all of its own. And I want our guys to really embrace that kind of a mindset. And when you do, you can maximize every opportunity that you have, whatever the odd opportunity looks like. So I want our guys to to value and have a, a mindset of they get to do what, they, what they're what they doing, not got to do, they get to do it. And, uh, you know, as a reminder, there will be going to be a day that they can't play at Oklahoma anymore. They're not going to play anymore. They're going to have to hang the cleats up. And so, you know, I want them all to be able to look back and have absolutely no regret whatsoever. And uh, so this is, this is, you know, because they don't know what they don't know. And so we got to create perspective. we got to create vision. You know, we have to nurture, you know, uh, you know, the proper perspective of those types of things but they we can't want their success more for them than they want it for themselves uh, but I love the, the the leadership on our defense the returning players um, they got several guys that have a mindset like coach me like a freshman coach uh, uh, coach me like I know nothing and I love that you know <laughs> sign me up for that and you know having the humility first of all as opposed to well you know I've this is my third or my fourth year. Y'all lucky to have me back. You know, I wouldn't tolerate uh, that stance, uh, but I love it. Get, you know, a three deep of guys that are like, I need to be coached. 
You know, again, I came back with purpose. I'm, I need to get better. And so the humility, the focus, the toughness, uh, the the um, the leadership. They they recognize that they're in leadership positions, and, and everybody's watching them. How how they talk, how they practice, um, how they lead. Everything matters. So I got a great. Um, respect and appreciation for that on both sides of the ball. You know, maybe it's a a, Jill, a Jalil Farouk. You know, you know, on offense, or it's the the growth and development of a guy like like Jaden Gibson, uh, or it's the buy-in uh, and the toughness of a guy like a, a Bauer Sharp that just got here. And man, he he's trying to earn the respect of his teammates. Or uh, you know, Dion Burks. You know, these guys that are showing up here with a sense of desperation, but I see it from uh, lots of guys. Uh, you know, guys that are returning, and, uh, guys that just got out of here, out of, out of high school. You know, David Stone and uh, Jaden Jackson, amongst others. Uh, you know, that group of young defensive linemen, man, they, they live in that building. They're in between classes, you know, at night, after practice, they're they just want to get better. They want to. They want to have a role, and they're trying to develop that. So, the hunger, uh, the edge, and, and again, they're they're among several guys, you know, several offensive linemen. You know, really excited about young guys like a, a Heath Ozida, and uh, again, Logan Howe. I talk about him, Josh Bates. Man, we ain't got a tougher guy out here than Josh Bates, man. Get ready for his first game. Just yeah. talk about how he's doing in just that whole position. Yeah, the, again, the whole position's doing really good. You know, Brendan Zerberg, uh, he's gotten lots of reps too. And uh, but between between you know, Jackson and uh, you know Mike and uh, Brendan and Booty, uh, Casey's taking every mental rep. He's right there uh, next to me. And when we got the team settings. Uh, I feel great. You know, we're in the best position we've been in since we've been here. And uh, we got a lot to still learn and get better at. That goes without saying. Uh, but we've got more, again, competitive depth there. I think more guys that are showing the ability uh, to be able to get in the game and help us win. And uh, so I've been uh, really pleased with um, both progress, uh, leadership, uh, again, situationally, you know, decision making. Um, we're really showing some really great signs for some, particularly for some young guys that haven't, you know, played a lot of college football. Uh, you know, things to be excited about. Again, decision making, accuracy, uh, toughness, pocket presence, those types of things. Leadership. And how about the physicality of practice? You always talk about mm -hmm. that. That you got to see that out of your team. Are you seeing it out yeah. of your team? Yeah, we, uh, very much so. Um, uh, we just we talked about that post practice today. You know the. And you got to practice tough to, to play tough, and that's there's no way around that. And you know that's that's the name of the game. But we do have different tracking tempos and what we're allowed to do, you know, from a, a regulation standpoint. And um, so if it's if it's thud, you know, it means we keep people off the ground. You learn to practice the right way. And we showed them a, a clip of the Carolina Panthers, and they're practicing, and there's a, they're in tracking mode, which is. You know, keep everybody up, and nobody should really be contacting anybody. And Skelly and, and the rookie lit up the guy that's making a lot of money. And, um, and then the, we flipped it to uh, post-practice and the, the report that the, uh, the meathead that uh, ran into the highly paid receiver was, was uh, fired and <laughs> cut you know, right then and there uh, before the last player was off the field at practice. So, you know, that's a real thing. You know, you don't do things the right way like show up on time or whatever, you know, there's there's consequences, you know. We give them a little grace in a, in a locker room, but when they leave here, so practicing the right way uh, is a sign of a mature team uh, that uh, that cares and that understands and that, you know, there's a, a great focus to them, you know, on how we got to get better and take care of each other. What about you, Brent? How mm -hmm. have things changed for you in practice in, in year three, whether it's, you know, your just natural progression as a coach or having Zach here or whatever? Has, has that dynamic changed here this spring? Um, I think that there's there's more depth from a, an experience a standpoint of myself and uh, Zach and our other defensive coaches than maybe uh, what we had before. And so there's a different level of, of um, trust and sta uh, understanding, um, you know, Zach thinks more, more like me, and um, 
and then does a good job no matter what it is, if it's the fundamentals, if it's um, areas of weakness, if it's development uh, drills, or if it's scheme-wise uh, and situationally. So we work through a lot before we come out to practice, and um, um, I'm always going to be hands-on. Um, but, you know, I'm also trying to do what a, a head coach needs to be able to do, and that's get connected with other aspects of your team. And you can't just be all in on in one particular area. You've got to have your hands, all hands on deck everywhere. And so that's been a maturation from December of, you know, 5th of 21 uh, to where we're at now. And, uh, you know, the practice-wise, you know, what we're doing from a schedule standpoint, those types of things are very similar to what we did, you know, a year ago. Um, but uh, we've given our guys four straight Fridays off. and. Uh, a lot of coaches like to practice them on Saturday so you can keep them out of uh, harm's way, if you will. But, you know, we, we the game has become so demanding from a year-round standpoint, from a time standpoint. So trying to find ways to, you know, give the players time, that's one thing that they love is time. And so we've given them four straight weekends off this weekend. We won't be. We'll have a, let them sleep in. We'll practice around 1030 on, on Saturday. But uh, try to be mindful. Uh, for the players, you know, and put a schedule that uh, we can get our work done, but also uh, be mindful of, of recovery and their time, those types of things. A lot of players uh, said Zach's almost like a clone mm -hmm. out there of you, and that he sometimes maybe teaches things a little bit differently, and they understand it maybe in a different way. How, how big of a help has he been so far just teaching some of those guys? Yeah, no, it's, it's you know, I'm sure there's um, how we call things. I think scheme-wise, it's pretty much the same uh, but how we call things um, maybe in families uh, to make it make sense um, when you when you have to leave uh, just like when I left Oklahoma after the 2011 season I had to start over I got into a room and nobody knew what I knew nobody and one of the hardest things I've done from a professional standpoint and um, I, did, I couldn't take my my relationships my trust all my expertise, football acumen, I had to like start over. And, and then the language barrier, you know, there's whatever it was, there's a, there's 80 staff and defensive players uh, and that I had to teach them, you know. And uh, so if that was not, I had to figure out what they knew. And I didn't have anybody helping me. I didn't take anybody with me. And uh, so I say that you know, Zach doesn't necessarily have that, but when he did leave uh, several years ago and got out of, uh, you know, our football building and he had to go to several places and start over and build something from scratch and teach everybody around him, I think he probably learned maybe even more efficient ways to do it. And so he's been able to give, you know, some of those shortcuts, if you will, um, to help um, expeditiously you know, uh, develop our players, teach our players. Um, and so we've we've had a little bit, some new language, some new things uh, to go in, but just reorganizing, I think, uh, is that we cleaned the pantry out and we threw away stuff that, you know, that we didn't need anymore and we reorganized it. And uh, and so now all the all the cereals are on the, on the far right, on the bottom two shelves, you know, they're not spread out and that's where they belong. And just keep things nice and tidy, I guess, is the best way to, to express it. Brent, have there been any pleasant surprises, whether it be an individual or just about this team so far in spring? Yeah, there's been lots of them. It, it just, there's been lots. Um, you know, again, some of the young, again, returning offensive linemen uh, have been really good. I've said several of their names already. Um, um, Daniel from England, uh, he's been, you know, fantastic along with Fabecchi and, again, uh, Heath Ozaida and um, Brooks, uh, Josh Sosa, um, you know, those guys inside. I talked about bragged on Logan Howland at the beginning of uh, spring and the progress that he's been, he's been able to make. And and then we're, we're getting the best version out of Jake Taylor and Jacob Sexton uh, as well, and we, that you would expect that. Uh, you know, I was really excited about uh, Helms, and he got a little bit of a strain in his hamstring. We just want to make sure we don't make it worse, and then this time in the summer. But I expect him to maybe be back here uh, this week. 
Man, but I love what I saw from him. He can run, and, and he's, you can feel his presence when he's out there. He's, he's huge. Uh, and then, again, talked about uh, Bauer Sharp, and then, um, you know, Von Mitchell has done some really good things. You know, he's, uh, you know, not just at a re from a receiving standpoint, learn how to block and how to mix it up with some All-American type linebackers. I love our group of linebackers. Um, it's, we are as far away from where we were two years ago as you could be at linebacker. The development, the depth, um, what the, what it looks like. Uh, what I really like about this linebacking group, uh, and uh, Zach and Skowski, they've done a nice job of uh, developing you know position versatility and so we got several guys that are playing multiple positions to create depth uh, more opportunity uh, so when a guy gets banged up you don't just you're not limited with your options and so uh, but that's uh, been the heart and soul uh, one of the great leadership groups I love where Ethan Downs I mean he's just the game has slowed down for him he's playing fast and physical and then you got guy like Trace Ford that's played a lot of football I'm um, really excited about what PJ is. You know, he's a little over 250 pounds today. Looked great. Um, you know, uh, Caden Woolard, you know, you can tell he's played a lot of football, knows how to play. He's heavy handed, plays quick. He's long, he's big. And then um, again, we've got some really good young players, whether it's Taylor Wine or, again, uh, uh, you know, um, thinking about the guys uh, inside. Uh, but, but Nigel Smith, his versatility uh, as well. Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody there at defensive end. But, uh, but our inside guys, starting with DJ Terry, has been a great leader, a uh, really great leader. And then, um, you know, I really think that um, Grayson is going to play his best in football since he's been here. Um, he's pushing 295, uh, looks really good. And then, um, Devon Sears, I and mean, he's playing his best. He's the most improved, probably, of the of that group of returning players. Uh, and we need, he's powerful, you know, he's close to 300 pounds. He's got great quickness, really strong at the point of attack, heavy hand, but he can he can rush the passer. And then, uh, you know, Champ Sanders has been doing great. Um, uh, and then um, we've talked, I know it's been talked about a lot with uh, Jaden and uh, Stone and Marcus Strong, those guys, uh, and I'm really we're, we're better at corner right now than at any point in time uh, a year ago. Some of it's experience, a lot of it's experience. We had a lot of guys that never started a college game. The only guy that ever started a college game in last year's squad, uh, going into last year, was Woody Washington, and uh, and so that was a little, you know, concerning, and um, but really like where we're at. Everybody's better than what we were a year ago. And I know there's a few guys um, like Gentry that, that are out uh, for the spring, but um, you know, we've, we've got a really um, improved group of players. And then the young guys that we've brought in, whether it's you know Eli Bowen. Eli Bowen can go anywhere in the secondary and play right now. The game's easy uh, for Eli. Um, but, you know, I'm really excited about Jacoby Johnson, uh, Can I Walker, uh, certainly, uh, you know, we got a transfer. Uh, you guys saw him out here, number 12. Yes. Uh, yeah, Des has done uh, some great things. You can tell he's played corner for a long time. Uh, again, a year ago, we had several really good athletes that had not played much corner growing up. And, um, and at times it showed that lack of um, skill development for the position. But, man, uh, again, I just named a couple of guys that are playing in a much different place than what we were a year ago. They're big, long, fast, athletic. And uh, Kendall Dolby, you know, he's one of the most disruptive players on our whole defense. He can play anywhere. You know, he plays like he's seven foot five and uh, 250 pounds. He's wide open. And then, again, I like Again, Desan McCullough, you know, he's, he can play outside, can play inside. And uh, again, trying to help guys develop, you know. I know every one of these guys want to play a long time. We want to try to help put them in position to get them exposure to what that looks like long term. And, um, you know, so a guy like Desan, you know, he going to play outside. 
in the NFL, and he's going to play inside as well. You know, there's I don't want to I don't want to you know pigeonhole him. You know, and um, so we've we've been cross training lots of guys at lots of positions, and again our our safety's really excited about them. And again, I think we're we lost some good ones uh, last year as far as experience uh, in uh, Reggie and Key in particular. Um, but we we got again Billy and RJ and Peyton as your cornerstones coming back along with some really good young ones, and uh, been excited. You know, McCarty's having his first time as a football player this has been this spring he hasn't taken any reps he coming off the ACL and then he tore his hamstring like the first day of conditioning coming back and missed all last year and um but so he's getting looks and then you got again uh Reggie and Bo Boganowski and um uh 14 um Jayden from Jaden Hardy uh he's he's you know, ain't nothing he can can't do. Uh, he can play corner, he can play cheetah, he can play safety. Football again is easy for him. So we got some really good football players um, with uh, returning, and then a lot of our new guys. They just they find the ball. They know how to maintain leverage. Uh, they understand the difference in the stresses of two deep, three deep quarters, man to man. Uh, confident players, but they show up with great humility and an eagerness to work and compete. So as opposed to, hey, this is the first time they failed. They never really got chewed out. They've always been the guy. And so there's a transition because they can't get out of their own feelings. That's not an issue with any of our guys. None. Zero. Uh, you know, there's not a more humble, hardworking guy on our team than David Stone right now. And, you know, and he'd be the first to tell you, man, I got a lot to learn, a lot to get better at. But, man, he's showing up every day with that mindset. That's how you do it. And we try to recruit that. Uh, we try to be very intentional about that, and then sometimes you just get lucky. You know, we got good parents and good environments that they come from, a great locker room that they come from. Like, you know, Reggie coming from Centerville. Like, man, that's a freaking, that's a that's a program right there in the state of Ohio, in a state that that has great football programs, uh, top to bottom. You know, he's coming from a program that is about something, and um, and so he's brought a lot of that with him, and. Uh, some things that you, you can't bring with you. Just like when I went to uh, Clemson, you know, couldn't take 13 years of, of, of uh, relationships and credibility with me. Had to go and start all, over with all of those. And uh, just like these guys, they got to earn trust, earn relationships, you know, develop a reputation by showing up every day, uh, earning the, the respect of their teammates by how they, they do what they do and, and, uh, and can't bring the you know, the stars or you know, the tackles, the sacks, the touchdowns with you. You got to start completely over. And, and again, it takes it takes a special dude to do that, you know, because these are 17 and 18 year old guys, not 24 and 28 and 30 year old guys. So that's what I've, you know, just as a 53 year old coach who's been a part of a locker room for 35 years in college as a player and a coach, you know, those are things that get me excited. And both in the short term and the long term, as you build things the right way, and uh, because I want guys that are multipliers, guys that are going to reproduce who they are, you know, reproduce in their own environments, and uh, you know, and so if that's if that's excellence and hard work and toughness and consistency, and 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 you know, especially elite talent and leadership skills, then that's great. You know, we'll we'll reproduce that in our own locker room. Brought up, you brought up Woody. What have you seen from him this spring in terms of the adjustment to playing multiple positions? Yeah, just you know um, that it's all easy to him, um, and again, an eagerness to uh, have a great role and show again versatility. So he's done some of that in the past, but more of it, you know, now than ever. You know, corners, um, it's a one of the hardest positions to play. But from an X and O standpoint, not really difficult. And uh, so that part's good. And we, we, he still plays both every day, inside and outside. And so really excited where he's at. And he's a leader. He's a tough guy. He's always making guys better. You know, he's a guy that's going to celebrate all of his teammates' success all the time. Coach, what goes into the preparation for the next open portal window? Be that evaluating potential needs and wants for your own team or just having to deal with the ever-present 
threat and potential of a departure from your own roster that maybe you weren't anticipating? Yeah, well, you just got to stay ready, I think, is the biggest thing. You got to, so if that means that you, you know, you're certainly always assessing your own team and, uh, you know, where you're at and you're hoping that everybody kind of stays, but that's not, uh, you know, likely in this environment. And uh, so you just be ready and prepared to adjust when it happens, you know, and be proactive from, uh, you know, what that's going to look like and where your needs might be and being prepared based on what, from an availability standpoint, who, who might be available. And a lot of that you don't know. And um, so, again, if it was the NFL, you know who's getting ready to be a free agent. <laughs> you, so you, you can have like a real board that says, all right, these are the free agents. That window is a small window, so you try to stay aware in college football. But uh, I'm not going. Uh, you know, uh, it's always about finding and meeting our needs of, of this team. Team, you know, uh, 130 and dressing those first. So in many ways, it's kind of simple. But there are some preparation things that um, you know you have a staff that is always uh, prepared. They understand of the landscape of college football and who's doing what. And uh, so that's there any, it. Are there any position groups here? that you've looked at and you said maybe we could use another body or two there? Yeah, but I'm not really going to, yeah. you know, talk through that. But, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's part of the being, you know, prepared. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks, Coach. All right. Y'all have a good one. Yeah.